Okay, everyone. So... Here if we you are look, again. Yeah, if you look back to three weeks ago, we talked about the <laughs> recent law change or pseudo law change in Texas that is causing the Department of Health and Human Services there to essentially hunt down uh, families of trans kids because they're viewing that as abuse because Republicans hate all life. Um, they do not believe in liberty. They do not believe in actual freedoms. What they believe in is inflicting harm upon minorities for the bottom line of capitalism and for funsies, because it is always about cruelty first and foremost. Well, we didn't cover this one last time because we didn't have a ton on it, and the segment was already running over quite a bit. So let's talk about this piece of shit. One second, got to make this not dark. There we go. Florida House passes controversial don't say gay bill. So you probably heard this from other streamers, but we're going to cover it here for those who don't know. The parental rights and education bill, dubbed the Don't Say Gay bill by LGBTQ activists, has been passed by Florida House representatives. The bill would limit what classrooms can teach about sexual orientation and gender identity. Under this legislation, these lessons may not occur in kindergarten through grade three or in any in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate for students in accordance with state standards. The bill would also allow parents to sue schools or teachers that engage in these topics. So... I'm going to say something a bit controversial first off the gate. This first part is awful, but there is a chunk of it that I do agree with. And that is the developmentally appropriate part, right? The idea that you should make these messages developmentally appropriate for the child in question, right? You don't need to do a huge gender discussion with a, you know, six-year-old, but you can go like, well, some people are born boys, but they feel like girls or they feel like they're neither. Like, you can have that conversation very simply. Or you can, you know, have conversations about the ways that they experience stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Ask them, you know, you ask them, hey, where are you at? You know, where are you, what are your thoughts right now? Like, what do you see going on around you? You know, you, you break it down for their age group. Yeah, yeah. So that part I have no problem. But the fact that you can't talk about it at all before kindergarten and grade three is really, really fucking awful. Because the problem is, is that they're trying to use developmental language as a means by which to mm -hmm. cloak what's actually going on. Now, to what's, be, oh, I was going to say, to be clear, professionals that are doing this kind of education are trained in these things. They are trained in what's developmentally appropriate. Yeah, and also discussions of these are already set to this. So while I agree with the notion they need to be developmentally appropriate, they already are to some extent. So there's no mm -hmm. reason for this except for this per first part. We don't want anyone in kindergarten or grade three to be exposed to these things. And you know why that is. We've talked about this on the stream before, but me and Xena are big fans of the notion of representation. Representation mm -hmm. is incredibly powerful. I always go back to the scene in Shira at the very climax of season goal. Um, season five Shira, there is a scene where Katra kisses Adora. If you are a small kid and you see that scene, that can be incredibly powerful because all of a sudden you are in the position of going, wait, girls are an option? But what this does, as TMI just said in chat, denormalizes uh, identities that do not form, fit into head normativity or otherwise. The problem with this is, is that by not talking about these things, not only are you essentially engaging in anti-intellectualism and newspeak, this is a form of, you know, fascism. But on top of that, it actually also silences teachers who are these things. Yep. Now, granted, in those grades, I, probably someone doesn't bring up their, their you know, sexuality in any particular context. But if your teacher is transgender, that might come up because a, teach, because your, because a parent might have an issue. That might well, somehow find a way. The way it would probably come up at, at that age group is just legit like, hey, Miss So-and-so, you know, sometimes kids don't find out about your personal life. It happens, right? Miss So-and-so has a partner, right? Yep. Um, if you're... Uh, um, What's the word for the your Mr. Mrs. Miss whatever was changing, you know, because you were making those choices. No, your, your kids would know about it and they'd ask the questions like that's really normal stuff. So this would also most likely cut off those people from just being regular people participating, you know, like in a like a like a person in their classroom. Yep. So the second part of this, though, is where things get rough. This is the new thing that seems to be the Republicans favorite bullshit. Right now, every single law I can think of that they've been coming up with lately, whether it's the abortion stuff or whether it's this, 
is instead allows for pri- you know private citizens to bring charges in the form of what it sounds like civil suits against people for violating these very vague rules. As Astra said in Shadow Eye, this is very intentionally vague because what specifically means developmentally appropriate is going to be really questionable. Do you mean developmentally appropriate to me like a clinician? Or do you think developmentally appropriate to say, uh, you know, a conservative evangelical preacher? Because we're going to have very different takes on that because, well... One of these things is backed in expertise and research. The other one's going to be backed in super superstition and nonsense and probably yeah. is going to come from the perspective that anything that is outside of tra- traditional marriage is going to be somehow a sexual deviancy. Yeah, what if they're transitioning? If you if you stay in the closet or we consider breaking this law, Kira is absolutely right. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. the bill is now, is now on the Senate agenda for February 28th. So it's if I remember correctly, this got passed. So this is an old uh, old article. I had to pull up something quick this today. If it gets signed into law, it would go into effect on July 1st. Governor Rodson says he supports the bill, though he, he hasn't explicitly said he will sign it if it crosses this. Let's be very clear. DeSantis is a monster who changed the books so that the people didn't know. Yeah, I know it did get signed into law. I grabbed an old article. We'll cover that in a minute. I got more. Um, so LGBT activists and uh, advocates slammed the decision to move the legislation forward, saying it will harm queer youth. This is true. By, by not allowing kids at this age to talk about this stuff or have actual education, what you're doing is silencing them. I know that's a weird thing to think about for those who you know don't, don't follow this stuff closely, but that's what this does. It silences those kids. What if these kids are having you know same-sex interests? Or what if they are they themselves who are trans? Like, what if little, little Susie is actually a trans girl and has been, tran- you know, has been living as a girl since four? Does this mean that she can't talk about that? Because it says the teachers can't, but now it sounds like this is going to slam anyone because if the teacher responds to this in any meaningful way, is that technically talking about it? Like, this is really unclear. Well, and and to be clear, like, kids ask all sorts of questions when they, during school. Like, they really, really do. And so this law, I think, is especially messy when you take that into account. Let's say you're writing, you're, or you're not writing, so you're reading a book in class, right? And there's something where, like, something happens with a boy and, you know, people are bringing up their thoughts on it, right? I mean... Kids just keep asking questions because they're kids. They're learning. That's what they do. Um, and I think this is especially problematic because if you go back to our videos where um, we're talking about like some of the sexual orientation ones um, and gender too, um, getting cut off from having the language or the words around something in the first place is a huge problem. It makes it very hard for you to piece out what's actually going on. Okay. And so you get stuck in the, okay, well, now this stuff is just vague. I have no way to express it or no way to talk about it. All right. And you get to just, especially when you're young, you just kind of sit with that weirdness, that strangeness, that oddness for your whole life. And it just kind of fucking builds up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, lawmakers should be supporting LGBTQ students and their families, encouraging schools to be inclusive, not pitting parents against teachers and erasing LGBTQ community from public education. So not only, yeah, because if you can't talk about these things, you you can't talk about history. And as Kira said, this was passed. So the problem is, is that if this isn't fought effectively, then you get into the problem is they can start moving the goalpost and saying when it is appropriate and start trying to scrub it from higher and higher levels of education. And the reason they're doing this is very clear. They don't want gay kids. They don't want trans kids. And they're willing to let those kids suffer in silence and end up hurting themselves if that'll get their goal of having those kids be silent. Well, and let's be real here. If you start with that young of age group and they're already used to being silent on it, they're already used to not asking those questions, not getting those kinds of answers, by the time they are in high school, no. Do you think they're going to keep asking those questions? In- no. You've already learned that your school is toxic for you. Indoctrination takes coordination. Indoctrination, the game we all can play. Um, he added, when lawmakers treat LGBTQ topics as taboo and brand our community as unfit for the classroom, it or it only adds to the existing stigma and discrimination. So I agree with this entirely because the notion is, is that I've said this before, that one of the things I do think is an issue within the LGBT community is one, there's this over focus on sex, like the act of sex. But again, if you've ever been in like, say a lesbian relationship, like, yeah, sex is great, but also, like, the actual feeling of being with a partner, the actual feeling of being able to be in love with this person mm-hmm. is a big deal. We talk, and again, there are aspects of transition that have nothing to do with sexuality, right? But because they've somehow inevitably, like, t- 
twisted this into their minds as being this sex thing. This again, because they're they're fascists and they believe this is degeneracy. That's a thing. So this did get passed. Um, I apologize for getting an old article. I was in a rush because the original one got deleted accidentally. This is. Oh Brawl God. Um, Brawler. 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 Long until something like a boy with long hair gets seen as gender ideology. We're already there. Um, and any students, frankly, that are also dealing with anything that appears to be outside of the binary will probably get hurt in this too. Let's be real here. You know, that that's this hurts everybody. Yep. Um, so Representative Joe Harding defended the bill saying the bill would not prohibit people from talking about gender identity and sexuality. It would ban curriculum and lessons. But the problem is if you can sue parents and it's a very vague way to do so, like this is insane because that means that if the parent, like let's say the kid comes out to a teacher and the teacher tries to give some like actually helpful advice, what happens? Does this consider gender ideology? Like, so, so this is what happened there, but it gets stupider. Disney CEO apologizes for silence on Don't Say Gay Bill. I let you down and I'm sorry. This is not a good apology. So facing a tidal, back, a, a tidal wave of backlash following Disney's failure to speak out against Florida's Don't Say Gay Bill, Disney CEO Bob Chapek, um, I don't care if I pronounce the name right, formally apologized to employees today for the company's failure to support its queer community. Uh, in an internal memo, um, Chapek... Uh, addressed widespread criticisms of Disney's wi uh, winning silence in response to the Don't Gay Bill passed recently on the Florida Senate, Senate, as we just said. The message was addressed to all Disney employees, but especially our LGBTQ plus community. Yeah, like, so for those who don't know, one of the big things that came out when this whole bill was being fought over was that Disney actually is a donator to a lot of the politicians and a lot of the people behind this and they were silent as fuck so much so that a bunch of people got really mad including dana terrence the creator of the lovely and wonderful show owl house that's coming back soon um here's the thing the apology followed a chaotic week of uh, for the head of disney who previously told employees that disney would not be responding to the bill publicly despite operating a massive business empire in the state the Parental Rights in Education, as it's formally named, prohibits educators from discussing sexual orientation or gender identity with students at certain grade levels and would allow parents to bring legal action against school districts who educators address them. So, but again, here's the thing. As much as I love Owl House, Disney really fucked, you know, fucked up here because here's the problem. By definition, with the amount of actual political weight they had, and granted, I hate lobbyists and I hate the corporations have this, but they could have actually used this for good. They could have actually put a huge amount of lean on Florida, uh, on Florida, um, on the Florida legislature. Why? Because they probably pay most of them. Think about it. It's not just their movies. It's not just their things. But Disney World probably brings in a huge amount of state revenue for hotels, for you know, uh, vending, for all sorts of crazy there, shit. There's a is it Disneyland or Disney World? Disney World is the one in Florida. Yeah, Disneyland Disney is the World one in is California. In, yeah, yeah, Disney World is in Florida, by the way. In case uh, yeah. all of you come from different places and don't know that. Um. Um, like, again, this idiot said corporate statements do very little to change outcomes or minds. See, here's the, the thing I'm going to say that's going to be pretty, pretty direct. This guy doesn't give a shit about trans kids. He doesn't give a shit about queer kids. The fact is, is that Disney as a corporation does not give a fuck about us. Corporations do not give a fuck about us. They only care about their bottom line. They suck up to queer people as a means by which to be able to increase their revenue because it seems advantageous. And if things were against us on a political level, they would not. That's not to say there couldn't be times where they would anyway. Look at what happens with them and the whole woke brands thing. But yeah, it's pretty rough. Zena, do you have thoughts on this? Um, that was about what Jess was saying. Actually, Cory Doctorow, I was reading, had an article about, um, this particular stuff that we might need to go over at some point. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll no. pick that up for next week, because it's just talking, he goes into more detail talking about, um, the power and money that is involved in this stuff, and how cruelty gets used to push that. Um, so, there's definitely more here. There's more to understand, and there is 
some top, you know, some larger level stuff going on. Um, yeah, that's what I got. Yeah. Um, we'll probably try and get that for another segment, though, I think. Yeah, so... Again, the thing we have to understand here is that Disney doesn't give a shit about us. Disney is a corporation that has a yep. very real, a re- very real goal. Rainbow capitalism in and of itself is not a problem. I know that's an unpopular unpop- position, but it just isn't. Well, hear us out, okay? Right? So here's the thing. Rainbow capitalism in itself is benign. It does no harm. It does no good. It is a faulty attempt to uh, try to bring in revenue or create outrage, which then brings in revenue, uh, again, a la H. Bomber Guys Woke Brands, as a way to create things that will bring in more customers because they feel like they're ethically and morally engaging in something good. Right? It's a sa- it's using feelings to right make a sale or make money. Yeah. That's the thing with rainbow capitalism that is, I guess, the issue is, is that it all depends on its use. There are uses of it that are just benign. They don't have any meaning because in and of itself, it's not a problem. But when it's manipulative in this format of trying to say that you have queer characters in your movies, which Disney sucks at and hides them in China. But on Mm -hmm. top of that, they seem to sort of bury them even in other places. This is the problem. Disney's a really good example of where a very faulty variation of rainbow capitalism exists. So it's more akin to outrage marketing, correct? Mm -hmm. Right? They will support us. They'll put up flags for Pride Month. They'll do all the stuff they can because it is seen as a good thing to do by the overall majority public. It does aid to normalization. It does, however, also really suck when the month is over and these people do nothing. Yep. Go ahead. Oh, I was just, that's all. I'm just on the same page there. The normalization is, yes, a sign that we're, you know, moving in a direction, but that's that's what it is. It's just a sign. It's not anything more than that. Yeah. Well, and it's not just PR points. It's also money. Like, oh, it's, I know it's, you- this stuff literally equals a dollar sign. So if a corporation does something that's well liked, that is supports the queer community or does something that is that is looked at as um, a good thing to do, this can do one of this has two effects. The first one is, is that all the people that support it, all the progressives, will look upon this as a good corporation and often will ignore the slights of that corporation previously. Nike saying men need to do better while also having, you know, child labor in other countries is a problem. People then get a positive idea towards Nike for being against toxic masculinity while they're engaging in essentially slave labor. The same thing is true here with the other side of that, where there are people literally burning their Nikes, again, idiotic conservatives burning their your $250 Nikes to stick it to Nike like you already bought them why do they care and then statistically speaking then you go out and do what you you buy right like you then go out and buy Nikes again like under the DL like you know now that it's not a, a problem well yeah because it's not good PR there that's the point Rusty that's um, the that's the thing I think that I, that that's no, an no. obvious statement. Oh yeah, yeah, no, we're we're all on the same page. I, I, there's a lot of statements where I'm I'm pretty sure all of you are like super on the same page with us and super on like the same wavelength. Uh, we might be seeing. I think we're all like the the times all are all synced up pretty well. But PR points, absolutely, yes. Different countries have different. Um, yeah, Chess was saying earlier that no, they absolutely go and hide this crap and like. Russia. Yeah, China. Rusty, I'm going to disagree with you. I don't think it's pointless. I think it's much more complicated than that. I, it, just waving our hands and saying it's pointless, I think, is ignores the nuance of the situation. Because even though we want them to do it in every country, arguably doing it here does add to normalization. But the problem is there's no backbone to it. There's no money towards it. And you're right. Part of that whole backbone apparatus is also them enforcing it in countries where this stuff is not popular. But again, This is the same thing that Blizzard did. Remember when Blizzard bent the knee to China over um, the Hong Kong protests? I don't remember the exact rules of that law, but essentially they wanted to take, what is it, journalists who were considered enemies of China and have them extradited or or sent um, or extrajudicially sent to China. And Hong Kong went fucking nuts about it, rightfully so. So much so that Blizzard bent the knee and ended up taking away a kid's like award money and other shit like that. Like, 
there's a point to this though, is that these acts, I think it's possible for us to acknowledge the positive these things do, but also acknowledge this, the lack of scope and effect they have. The problem is with Disney, and we come back to this again and again, is Disney is not actually even trying. If these were actual real, like, oomphs, real meaningless effect, mean, meaningly, me meaningful effects, then this would be a thing. But the problem is this isn't like, like, let's be really clear. I can't think of another on, on like, I can't think of another actual on-screen same-sex kiss from a Disney property other than the Owl House. There's feigning, there's anything, but I don't know if there's anything there. Yeah, there's no proactivity. It's all reactive attempts to deal with it. Yeah, it's it's really problematic. So they've said they're going to pull funding away from these people. I think we need to verbally and like publicly hold them to that. I also think we need to ask for better. Representation matters. Representation is important. And why transphobes and, and homophobes hate this shit so much is because it allows people to figure out who they are faster. It's not degeneracy if it's normalized. And while I am not a huge assimilationist, I do think some level of normalization is always going to be important because we have to live in this society. We have to work in it even as we try to change it. My point with all of this is, and I think Xena can agree, is yeah, that yeah. this is really shitty. And Disney, by definition, is not doing its due diligence to actually help us. This took too fucking long. And this law is awful. This law is the definition of newspeak. It is the definition mm -hmm. of anti-intellectualism. And it is this from a party who claims they want to protect kids at a developmental level, but will block things like sex ed, which will prevent... Said abuse, yeah. Yeah. Sex yep. ed that would not only make teen pregnancy rates go down, but sex ed that would prevent kids from being assaulted or harmed more because it would give them the word to be able to tell when something is happening. And also the knowledge to know what boundaries are appropriate. Correct. Yep. So this shit is awful. Disney fucked up and really doesn't care about us. And the GOP is just at this point a perpetual motion machine of cruelty. Got anything yeah. else? No, cruelty, amassing power, and money. True. That's that's that. Yeah. All right. Guys, we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Also, consider donating to us. You can support us on our website, transgirltherapist.org. You can also help us on our Patreon, link below, or you can become a member here on YouTube. Um, thank you so much for watching.